my beauties and welcome back to my channel and welcome to the ultimate backpacking guide for you. In today's episode, which is episode two, we're going to be talking about how much money to take traveling with you. And I know that this is a really, really big question that was on my mind before I went traveling. And I know for a fact it's going to be on many people's minds before going because I've had a lot of people ask me, how much money did you take with you? And I'm here to kind of settle the ground and hope that it gives you a lot more of a rough idea of what you might need to take with you depending on where you go. So I'm going to start this video off with saying that it really does depend on where you go and I know that that's really annoying to hear but it's true, it really is true. It depends on where you're going and it depends on how long you're going for. So I'm going to talk about this as if you're going for a long period of time, let's say a year or two years because that's what I did and I think that that's probably what is the most scariest when you are going to go for a longer period of time. You just really want to make sure that you've got yourself covered for that whole time if you know that you're not going to be working as well. So at the beginning, all I say is save as much as you can at the end of the day, you want to have more than what you need than less, you know, because obviously you know that you're always covered. But what is a massive part to play in the money that you're taking traveling with you is you actually spend money before you go. So you need to make sure that the money that you are taking with you is going to be covering you for your food, your accommodation, getting around the country. If you wanted to buy some stuff while you're out there, activities, you need to make sure that you cover that whole range. But also you want to make sure that the money that you're saving you're also paying before you go traveling for your insurance your visas if you need a visa for the country that you're going to any kind of items that you might need before you actually go traveling like buying a backpack a portable charger a neck pillow those kind of things it does all add up but what I found was each month I would get a specific wage from the job that I was working at and I would have a certain amount of money that was going into my savings account and any kind of little bits that I needed to buy before going I'd buy them just in with the money that I had left over and I would budget for that as well. I did save a lot of money and I did put myself in quite a stressful situation because I was basically saving as much as I could. So when you want something, you know, you've got to just save for it. You just have to be dedicated for that. The best advice I can give you is have a rough idea of how much you want to save in mind. Okay, then add on to that how much you think it's going to cost you for all your flights. And what I recommend doing is actually each country that you know you want to go to, because now that you've planned your route, each country that you want to go to, check to see how much it costs to fly from that country to that country and write that down. And do that with the whole route that you want to go on and add that total up. So you've got that amount of money, let's say if it came up, say five flights came up to a thousand pounds. You can then say, okay, well, I need to make sure that I've got a thousand pounds saved over for all my flights. And then again, you wanna do the same with your visas. See what visa you need for each country, how much that's gonna cost you and how long you can spend in that country because that can also come into play with the flights that you book and the time that you book it. Just make sure you've got some money left over for your visas as well. Also, if there's any specific activities that you want to do in that country, make sure you have enough spare for that activity as well you might not do it but at least you know that you've got that little bit of money in case you do want to do that let's say if you want to go to a elephant sanctuary in thailand or you want to jump out of a plane in new zealand you just need to make sure you kind of know roughly how much that activity is going to cost you and add that to your savings as well and the most annoying thing about going backpacking is buying your insurance before you go. Shop around first and make sure that you buy an insurance that covers you for everything and also that is a really good reasonable price as well and covers you for the whole period of time that you're out there. My insurance cost me about £250 which to me was fine because if anything happened to me I would have been totally covered and I think £250 to cover me if anything happened I think is worth paying for so these expenditures they end up coming out of your cost before you even go away sometimes i took seventeen thousand pounds with me for traveling and my plan was to go for two years and i didn't even go for two years i ended up going for one year and three months but i worked in australia and i worked in new zealand for a really short lived time but i spent all that money and I actually could have made it last me a lot longer, but the activities that I did were quite costly. I did a lot of free diving, that is quite costly. One of my free diving courses was um, level one and level two. This was in Bali and I also got accommodation and my, my breakfast every morning and that came to around £750. So that was quite expensive and that £750 I could have probably travelled in Thailand for a whole month 
with that. So again, depending on the country that you're going to, you need to figure out kind of roughly how much it would cost to live in Thailand for a month. You can live really quite comfortably in Thailand for about £750 a month. But if you really, really want to go extra, you can give yourself a budget of £1,000 per month for each country that you go to. So say if you just did Thailand for a month, Laos for a month, Vietnam for a month and Cambodia for a month, which is kind of similar to what I did, I gave myself a £1,000 budget for those countries. And then the leftover bits I had, I could spend on different activities that I wanted to do because it is really cheap in Asia. It's actually cheaper than you would even think. So um, yeah, just really, really bear that in mind. But giving yourself, I would say, it's good to give yourself about a £1,000 budget per month. And then you know that you're covered for everything in that month depending on where you want to go and what you want to do, even for activities, you probably will be covered with a £1,000. It's really honestly so cheap in Thailand and just Asia in general. Bali's a little bit more expensive, but it's still much cheaper than England and the US, let's say. So give yourself a budget for each month, add that in total, and then that can be, for depending on how long you go, that can be the amount that you take with you. So you think about it, 12 months, I could have spent a thousand pounds a month and I could have gone traveling for a year and five months. So that's kind of how you could figure it out. But because I spent money on big activities, I didn't travel for half as long. And I ended up doing a spontaneous trip to Peru, which obviously threw me out a lot of money, but that was fine because that was worth it. So just bear in mind what you wanna do, where you wanna go, and just have the extra bits of money, knowing that you know your flight from Thailand to Cambodia is gonna cost you only about 60 pounds, but still it's just, have that in total, have that, have like your flight budget and then have your visa budget, have your activity budget and have your spending budget for your food and your accommodation. Just spreadsheet guys, I, I can I put my hands up and say I made so many spreadsheets <laughs> related to travel because I just needed to kind of have everything in order to, go, to know how much I've got. But you, you won't really bother with it that much when you're there, but to just know before you go, it gives you so much more of a clearer mind space and it makes you feel so much more relaxed knowing that you're gonna be fine and you're, you're gonna be covered. And just remember as well, you need to make sure that you have enough money for your flight home if you don't book that in advance. Just make sure you know roughly how much it's going to cost you to get home from the last country that you're visiting. Okay, my loves, I hope that helped with covering that area of preparing yourself for backpacking. In episode three, we're going to talk about the essential items that I feel that you need for your backpacking trip. Again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.